So, hi everyone. I'm Mary, and I'm here to talk to you today uh, about using SAIL to generate a GNU assembler, disassembler, simulator uh, for the RISC-V toolchain. Uh, a little bit about me to start. I'm just an undergraduate student at the, studying at the University of Surrey for electronic and electrical engineering. I'm a UK ESF scholar with Embercosm and I am the group chair for the RISC-V Foundation's open source and university outreach task group. So you all qualify to be in that task group, so please come join us. And if you're interested, come talk to me after this uh, presentation. So in the past, creating a new processor has consisted of defining a formal specification and then creating an assembler and compiler toolchain definition from this by hand. The operation of the assembler and compiler can only be verified once the processor has been manufactured, which introduces a linear dependency. The time scale could be significantly reduced if the definitions could be generated automatically from the specification, but this has proved difficult in the past. However, advances have been made with the processor specification language and framework to generate the assembler and compilers, so it should now be possible. That's where my final year undergraduate project comes in. It aims to develop code in a functional programming language that creates the main file required by the tool chain generator from the processor description with minimum human interaction. The RISC-V architecture, more, spe more specifically RV64i, will be used as the model. This would represent a significant step towards a complete framework for the automation of, for automatic translation. During this project, I will, during this presentation, I will discuss the processor specification language, SAIL, show a handwritten RV64i example of SAIL, do a little bit of OCaml, and then finish off with CGen, the CPU tool generator, and another example of RV64i, but this time for CGen. So to start off with, I'll give a little bit of context as why I believe this pr project to be important. A processor is a key concept, component in any computer, which uses logic circuits to perform user-specified operations on data or operands. New processors are being designed all the time to fulfill different area needs, such as low-power processors for wearable tech, or high-performance graphics processors. To allow these modifications, often processors have different blends of hardware and software, which require using special optimizations and new instructions. There are some key steps in the development life cycle of a processor. These are designing the physical hardware for the processor, defining the processor's optimizations, writing the ISA, creating the simulator of the ISA, running pre-silicon tests, which is basically where you take the ISA simulator and the hardware model and run them together, and then finally manufacture the design. But designing a processor from scratch takes too long and is too expensive. ARM estimates that it takes about 300 engineer years to complete a new reasonable design. So often there is a need to use third-party designs such as ARM or an open source design such as RISC-V. Once an ISA is defined, the next step is to write the assembler and disassembler and the other CPU tools. This step is the one that stops mo many organizations from going down the custom processor route, as it takes a long time and there is no guarantee of success. 
but it can be done with an open source CPU generating tool called CGen. But this leaves the problem of converting the hardware language, hardware design of the processor to CGen. Until recently, there was a lack of formal methods to define the hardware in such a manner. The automated analysis could be performed to confirm that the design actually does what is required. Sale was de developed to fulfill this niche. The formal model is written in Sale, a language describing the instruction set architecture semantics of a processor. It is a work in progress by the University of Cambridge. SAIL aims to provide an engineer-friendly, vendor pseudocode-like language for describing instruction semantics. It is an essentially a first-order imperative language, so it uses predicates which can define non-logical objects. An example Sentence would be there exists X such that X is Socrates and X is a man. But Sale also has lightweight dependent typing for numeric types and bit vector lengths, which are array data structures that, comp that compactly stores bits. These are automat automatically checked using Z3, the prover, not the BMW. It has been used for several papers available from the University of Cambridge SAIL website. The link is here. Given a SAIL definition, the tool will check it and generate executable emulators in C and OCaml. Theorem prover definitions for Isabel and Hoc4. And definitions to integrate with the REM tool for concurrency semantics. To introduce the features in more detail, I will now go through a simple RV64i example. The RV64i in sale is handwritten. We will start with some basic type synonyms. We create a type x then underscore t for bit vectors of length 64. Then we define a type regino which is a type synonym for the built-in type atom. The type atom is a number which is exactly equal to the type variable atom. Type variables are semantically marked with single quotes, as in ML. A constraint can be attached to this type synonym, ensuring that it is only used when we can guarantee that its value will between, be between 0 and 31. Sales supports a rich variety of numeric types, including range types which are system, statistically checked. We can then define a synonym, reg bits, for bits 5. We don't want to manually convert between reg bits and reg no all the time, so we define a function that maps between them and declare it as a cast, which allows the type checker to insert it where needed. By default, SAIL does not do any automatic casting, except between basic numeric types when safe. But to allow idioms in ISA vendor description documents, SAIL supports flexible user-defined casts. To ensure that the constraint on the regino type synonym is satisfied, we return a quantified type. Now we set up some basic architectural state. First creating a register of type x, uh, xlen underscore t for both the program counter PC and the next program counter, next PC. We define the general purpose registers as a vector of 32, x then underscore t, bit vectors. The deck keyword isn't important in this example, but SAIL supports two different numbering systems. We th then define a getter and setter for the registers, which ensures that the zero register is treated specially. 
in MISC V, register zero is always hard coded to be zero. Finally, over, we overload both the read Rx and write Wx functions as simply x. This allows us to write registers as xr equals value and read registers as value equals xr. Sail supports flexible ad hoc overloading and has an impressive language in assignments with the aim of allowing pseudocode-like definitions. We also give a function memr for reading memory. This function just points to a bulletin we have defined elsewhere. Note that functions in SAIL are annotated with effects. The effect system is quite basic, but indicates whether or not functions read or write registers, rreg and, R and wreg. Read and write memory, rmem and wmem, as well as a host of other concurrency model related effects. They also indicate whether a function throws exceptions or has other non-local control flow. The escape effect, for example. It is common when defining architecture specifications to break instruction semantics down into separate functions that handle decoding, possibly even in several stages, into custom intermediate data types and executing the decoded instructions. However, it is often desirable to group the relevant parts of these functions and data types together in one place, as they would usually be found in an architecture reference manual. To support this, SAIL supports scattered definitions. We first give types for the execute and decode functions and declare them as scattered functions as well as the AST union. Now we provide the causes for the Adamedia AST type, as well as its execute and download causes. We can define the decode and the decode co causes. We can define the decode function by directly pattern matching on the bit vector representing the instruction. SAIL supports vector concatenation patterns. For example, the symbol at is the vector concatenation operator and uses the types provided, bits 12 and reg bits, to destructure the vector in, it, in the correct way. We use the EXTS library function that, signs, that sign extends its argument. Now we do the same thing for the load double instruction. Finally, we define the fall through case for the decode function and end all our scattered definitions. Note that the causes in a scattered function will be matched in the order they appear in the file. The sale backend is written in OCaml, which is a an impure functional programming language like Python. Functional languages are based on mathematical functions as opposed to procedural languages like C, which depends on flow statements such as if or for loops. The backend generates executable emulators in C and OCaml and theorem improver definitions from the SAIL model. One of the highlights of OCaml is its parametric polymorphism and type inference, which allows operations to be written independently of the type of the elements. This is useful for architectures like RISC-V and have multiple sizes of that have multiple sizes of instruction, since a single operation can be used on all sizes. How about a small ex example uh, to show you a bit of OCaml? No. I mean, wiggle the cable. Oh. The laptop's run out of battery. Technical 
problems. We can. Is it off? It's on. Looks like it must have gone to sleep. I think it turned off. Mm. Maybe you can uh, take some questions or something. Uh, yeah. Any. I mean... Pardon? Yeah, it's rebooting at the moment. I can take questions for what's gone through so far, I guess. Um. So your, your effect model just said reading memory. Does it need to say reading a particular address of memory, or is that not relevant? So the question was uh, my effect model, or the sale effect model, uh, says reading an address of memory. Does it need to say a specific address? I'm not a, the best expert on sale. I can put you in touch with Peter Sowell, who's the guy running Cambridge. <coughs> uh, I can give you his email afterwards, but I don't know at the moment. Any other questions? So the question was, how does the specification being written in a formal language fit in? So SAIL is the formal language. It already generates stuff, but it, so that's the formal language SAIL is. Uh, so Yeah, in sale. And, and, ah, but, um, it's of sale. So there'll be a MISC five definition written in the sale language, which will then be taken through OCaml into CGen, which I will come into in a moment. Yep. It didn't appease the uh, presentation gods enough today, I guess. Uh, 
Wojciechowski from uh, Campus Escon, it uh, must have pronounced it uh, GCC. Uh, uh, you use just the GCC or use a more uh, required uh, from Campus Escon? So the question was, do I use more than just GCC for the source code? Uh, as opposed to LLVM or another compiler? Or, I uh, don't think I fully understand what you mean. So, yeah, it's GCC. Um, so, the assembler uses gas and uh, it fits into bin utils. be loading up. Oh, well, shall I carry on? Oh, I get technical support to help. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a example of some OCaml. It's quite simple. It'll be a sourcing algorithm. I'm sure we've all seen them before, but it'll demonstrate the polymorphic ability. Uh, so first, it's going to define the function, the sort algorithm, and it's going to have a list input as shown um, and a list output. These will be shown by two square brackets in between with an arrow in between, the input coming before the arrow, the output coming after the arrow. The function will prepend x onto 1 and calls the inf insert function. The input of the function can either be a list of integers or a list of strings. This is the polymorphic ability. So I'll carry on to CGen. At university, my final year project is to use this, the sale description of RISC-V to generate low-level tools, namely assemblers and disassemblers. For this, I am using CGen, which is part of the GNU tool chain. CGen is an open-source CPU generate, tools generator, which uses a framework to generate assemblers, disassemblers, and simulators. The generator is written in Scheme, a functional language like OCaml, which makes the conversion easier. CGen ports to GNU, to GNU by adding a Scheme description to libopcodes, which is the GNU's library of opcode, operand codes. Libopcodes can then be used to assemble or disassemble C code using GDB and GAS, respectively. There are two steps to create an assembler and disassembler using CGen. This is first to connect CGen to Binutils. This will allow Binutils to look for the framework files required and generate the correct opcode files. The second step, of course, is to write the framework. To connect CGen to Binutils, the port name is needed to be added to a list of make files and configure files. The names of the required opcode files are added too. There are four main files in CGen which contain the framework and additional information to create an assembler. For RISC-V, these four files are RISC-V.CPU, the main framework file. It's written in Scheme and is the focus of this project. RISC-V.OPC. This file contains handlers for the Scheme framework. RVCPU.C. This file includes hooks written in C, which add more information about the hardware and ISA. And finally, RVCPU.H, the header file. The main file that I will be generating during this project will be RISC-V.CPU, 
the rest will be handwritten. CGEN must be written in a spe specific order to work, which I will go through when the PowerPoint decides to work. Uh, I'll start off. It starts, every file starts, every RISC-V.CPU file or equivalent will start with include simplify.inc. This includes the instruction macros for GNU binutils, which are used throughout the rest of the file. It's then followed by define arch. This function names the architecture and defines the endiness of the architecture. Define ISA is the next one, which defines the bit size of the ASA, with the ISA. And then define CPU, describes the CPU family, and instruction endiness again. Then define Mac, this is the function that defines the machine. Define unit, this is the function that des de describes the model. Every machine must have a model and every model a unit. The unit ha will have six sections. Issue, which describes the number of operations in progress at once. Done, defines the latency. State, lists the variable names and mode pairs. Inputs, the units of inputs. Outputs, units of outputs. And finally, profile action, which is the RTL code for function unit modeling. Once this is done, it's followed up by a definition of P macros. These are usually used for attributes for the instructions later on. They are also used to simplify the file. This is then followed by define hardware, which defines the hardware simulated uh, in the program. This can include the program counter and other registers. A P macro can be used to define the register names if there are many. DNF and DF are the functions that describe the instruction fields for registers and immediates. Hey. Define multi-field defines instruction fields which, have, which are made up of unconnected bit fields. Define operands defines the upper bounds used in the instructions. <coughs> it requires an instruction field. Then, and finally, defining the instructions. This function defines the instruction format. The instructions add and sub use the same bit format. Therefore, it is simply, it's simple to apply a P macro to the format. The in the instructions, hash B is used to define binary numbers. Multiple functions use attributes, which defines the ISA and machine of the instruction. Uh, this is shown by base ISIS. Once this file is written and the basic hooks are added, to the other three files. Make stamp followed by running a make command in binutils can be used to generate the assembler and disassembler. To conclude, being able to generate an assembler from the formal specification of an ISA would be very useful. The time scale for processor, for processor development could be significantly reduced if the definitions could be generated automatically from the specification. But this has proved difficult in the past. However, advances have been made with the processor specification language and the framework to generate assemblers, disassemblers and simulators. So it's now possible. This is just a status report for my project, 
which is far from done, but there is a clear aim and a method. Thank you for listening. And I apologize about the technical problems. Yes. Can you speak up a bit, please? We don't have any figures. We're, I don't think so quite yet. Do we? So... Okay, we'll keep a note of that. So, thanks. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. Have you considered using an FPGA for uh, simulations? Uh, we've looked into Verilog oh. a bit, but I, mean, I don't mind expanding into hardware programming for future projects. Thanks. I think there's no more questions. I think that's the end. Thank you.